What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 42 of Onshape. Um, today, specifically, I'm going to be making the heart cam and then also making the adjustment to the heart cam to make it work. <clears throat> now, I know there's a couple of other videos out there on how to do other ways of making these cams work. Um, my thing about that is, is that if I have to adjust the cam, I want to teach one method that works for all the cams rather than, you know, method for this cam, method for that cam, method for this cam. And so there is more than one correct way to do some of these cams. However, um, we tend to run into a little bit of a problem there. So uh, the circle cam works totally fine because uh, it's one edge. The eccentric cam works totally fine. There's no adjustments you have to do to it. And the hex cam there is a, a way to get this one to work where you fill at the edges here. Um, however, that doesn't work on the other types of cams, the snail cam and the heart cam that we're going to do. Um, so instead, that other method we've shown where we spline all the way around and get it to work um, works for all three of them. Works for the hex, the snail, and the heart. Excuse me. So let's go ahead and continue on. So we're going to make the heart cam today. It's going to look like this, and then we're going to spline it. It's going to look a little bit like that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a new sketch on this plane, and right click, hit view normal 2. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. Now we're going to have a center circle here. This center circle is going to be a diameter of 3 16 and uh, we're going to now start to draw our heart. The next thing I'm going to do is um, create a construction circle so that way I know my heart is not going to go outside this circle at all. And this is going to have a dimension of D. And that way if it were to expand or we change that variable D, the heart will expand or contract as we want. Okay, But I'm not going to actually use this line so I'm going to actually uh, click on this line, right click and make it a construction line. Okay, Now we're going to start to throw in some more other geometry to get this to work. So I'm going to throw in a circle over here. And I'm going to right click, make it uh, back to a uh, solid line because I'm actually going to use this geometry. And we're going to go ahead and dimension how far this circle is away from the center of my cam. And that's going to be D divided by 8. Oh, wait, wait, I'm put, let me make sure you put the pound sign or hashtag D divided by 8. That way it does that variable divided by 8. And then I'm going to do the same thing the other direction, in the y direction. So I'm going to click on the center of the circle, go to the left. So in the y direction, we're going to hit pound sign D divided by 5. Hit enter, and there we go. The only last thing I need to do is I want this circle to be tangent or touching um, the uh, outside construction circle. So we're going to hit, click on tangent. We want the edge of this circle to be a tangent on that circle. And it automatically changes the circle as we need. Looking good. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is um, there's kind of two ways you can do it. And I'm going to go ahead and actually see if I can get this to work just a little bit. We're going to uh, we're going to do some magic here. So I'm going to draw a line going straight up. Let's make it a construction line. And I'm going to mirror this circle. So I'm going to mirror this circle along that center axis right here and it goes ahead and it mirrors that heart. Now the reason we want to do that, let's go back on that sketch, is if I were to change this and say D divided by 7 and change that shape of the heart, it automatically will change both sides. Okay, so I'm going to talk more about how to change the shape of the heart here in a little bit, but um, let's go ahead and continue on. The bottom of my heart is going to be rounded off as well. So this is going to have a dimension of <clears throat> D, or so do pound sign D divided by 10. Okay? And then it's going to be connected by two lines. So we're going to have a line going from here to here. And then we're going to have another line going from here to here. Okay? Now, the, what I'm also going to do next is do tangent constraints. I want this line to be tangent to this circle and tangent to this circle, tangent to this circle, and tangent to this circle. And that kind of smooths out the shape of your heart. 
I'm gonna go ahead and trim up that extra. I just got a little bit too much there. There we go. Okay. All right, and we are almost done, folks. The last thing I need to do is dimension the center of these two circles to be such a distance away to where it goes to the maximum all the way out to here. And if I do a distance of, you know, hashtag D divided by two, you know, I think, oh, the radius. Well, you go a little bit too far. Your heart actually goes beyond your nominal diameter. So we're going to make this do a little bit of math for me. So hashtag D divided by two, or pound sign to V divided by two, minus D divided by 10, uh, or divided by 20, sorry. And that's because the diameter of the smaller circle, the one down here, is D over 10. So its radius would be D over 20. And if I enter now, there we go, perfectly. Um, we have our heart to look kind of the way we want. All right, and the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna throw in one last circle to round off the top up here. So I'm just gonna draw a circle in here, and I'm gonna throw in two tangent constraints. We're gonna want it tangent to both circles at the same time. And what this does is it creates this little valley right here, this smooth transition and that way it looks nice and good rather than a sharp, a sharp peak. Okay, so that's where we go. We got uh, the heart's got the smooth curves at the top. We have a, a smooth curve between the two uh, peaks, or two, yeah, two peaks here. We got a nice little smooth valley. And we have a smooth bottom. Looks great. I really don't recommend you trim anything in here. I uh, tinkered around with a little bit of trying to trim this up to where it wouldn't uh, kind of, when you change your dimension of what it is to kind of mess up your sketch. There was lots of problems I ran into. So what I found out is if you just leave it in there, but you extrude exactly what you want, it just does a wonderful job. So let's go ahead and call this done. All right, and now let's now extrude this heart. Make sure we get that little tiny piece in there. And we're gonna let it think. Think, spinning wheel, spinning wheel, spinning wheel, to a depth of 3 sixteenths. And there we go, folks. We've officially made our heart cam. All right, now what if you don't like the shape of your heart cam? So what we did in here is we changed the dimensions of this heart shape. So if I, what if I wanted the heart to be kind of wider at the top? We can change this number and make it a smaller number. So D divided by six. And what that'll do is it'll make your heart kind of a widened shape. And if you want it taller, we could change this and make this number smaller as well. And it would kind of make it a taller uh, overall shape. You can play with those numbers how you want to kind of get the heart cam that you would like. Um, but that's going to kind of be it for here. So the cool part is, is that since this is a parametric design, if you change any part of it, it'll automatically make sure that everything is to scale and everything looks good. All right, the only thing we need to do last is to uh, make this heart cam work for our future assembly. So I'm gonna sketch on this plane, right click, hit view normal two, and I'm going to spline this heart shape. And I'm just gonna start at the top and I'm gonna keep clicking all the way around. And this makes a nice smooth surface where it has one edge and everything works golden. Now you can use more data points to kind of get your shape to be more accurate to the heart cam we just made. Uh, for the sake of, I would say, efficiency and quickness of time, I'm going to use a little bit less than I would typically use if I were making this in uh, for my automata. All right, um, that center is 3 sixteenths. I know there is a way to project, but I haven't talked talk about that class yet, so I'm not going to use the project feature. Okay, and that's it. Let's get our this other heart came out of the way. And is this fully enclosed sketch? It sure is. Let's hit the green check mark. Let's extrude this one on out. And not the face of sketch 11. Let's do sketch 11. All right. When I do the face of sketch 11, it is actually a rough cut. So let's, let's do that again. If I click on this face here, we can see that there's tons of edges. And I don't like that. But if we click on just sketch 11 in general, it does a nice smooth feature all the way around. Okay, that depth is 3 16ths of an inch. 
and there we go. Since it's a heart cam, let's change that. Uh, let's rename this. Let's call it heart cam uh, for our assembly. And let's make it a red color. So let's edit its appearance. Nice red color. And there we go. We have our heart cam working for our automata. Okay, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be doing assemblies and mates and getting my automata to work with all of these cams that we've made uh, and how I get them to work and kind of the small workarounds I do for each one. This has been a fun project. I'm looking for the next couple of videos uh, of wrapping this up, but that'll be it for now. If you have any questions, th throw down in the comment section or reach out to me via social media. Um, I would love to help you out if I can. If I can't, I'm sorry about that. Um, but this has been a fun, fun, fun project so far, and I just want to keep feeding it. So if you got any ideas on what you want to do or something you'd like help on, please reach out, and I would love to help you if I can. Well, that'll be it. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.